everybody. Welcome to Down Home Backyard Gardening. Now in today's video, what I want to do is focus on 2022. And I did this last year and I had a lot of fun with it. So I thought, why not do this every year? So let's do it. Okay, so why do a year in review? Well, for me, what I like to do is look back and see the progression throughout the year. And for me, I like to look back and then try to adjust for the following year. So everyone sit back, relax, enjoy this ride, because here we go. All right, everyone, so today what I'm gonna do is make a bed for blueberries. I wanna have a dedicated space just for blueberry plants. Okay, so, <sighs> for those of you that have been following this channel for a while, y'all know I'm a disabled vet. I literally don't know what I just did to my back. It's got, I've got shooting pain going down my left leg right now so I'm gonna take a break on this I'm sure most people would edit this out but for the sake of keeping this channel real I'm gonna leave that footage in instead of doing another cinder block like I did over there this time I wanted to do this just because it's different and I wanted to try it and I liked how it looked on the potato bed so I thought why not do one for the blueberry yeah. All right, hey everyone. I have not done a single seed challenge update for my single seed challenge um, in quite a while. Everything I've been doing has been geared toward Moonlight, the second grade classroom's single seed challenge. Now, normally I have two plants here, mine and the second grade classroom's plant, which isn't in my hand. So what I did- Warning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Moonlight decided to take a field trip. So why don't we sit back and see her field trip she decided to go on. I might have quick. saw Mr. Chad this morning. <laughs> Alright, as y'all can see right there, Moonlight went to meet the second grade classroom today. I got to hear a little bit of her being introduced to the classroom, and I have to say, in all seriousness, it, uh, it absolutely touched me right here, and I teared up. Now, <laughs> I absolutely love seeing joy or hearing joy on people on kids' faces. Um, their excitement, which I was able to 
which I was able to show just the voices and the excitement. Couldn't show any faces, obviously, for, for a billion reasons. Um, and I wouldn't do that anyway. But the joy that you could hear in that clip absolutely touched my heart. Those kiddos were so excited and um, to see their plant, their single seed challenge plant that I'm, I planted here for them. I could not be more happy or excited for them to have got to meet her. Hey everybody, welcome to Down Home Backyard Gardening. This channel is hitting kind of a milestone today. This is the 100th video that I've posted. Now, it's time to change up this video and do a dedication. So I will be right All right, so I know what you're thinking. What in the world am I doing watching a gardening channel with a dude in a shirt and tie? I know. This is a special episode. And I want to dedicate this episode to a very, very special woman in my heart, in my life. And that is my grandmother, my mom's mom, my maternal grandmother, Phyllis Grace Dawnball. Okay, so let me ask you all a really important important question here uh, how many of you all watching this channel right now and still watching this video at this point can trace back to the person the influence or the reason that you that you are gardening good question right for me it's my grandmother now I can remember uh, being just a little boy in Kentucky, because that's where I'm from originally, uh, running around in the backyard with our family dog. Her name was Sugar. And uh, my grandmother had this little tiny, probably 10 by six, eight foot little garden. But could she grow some cucumbers or green beans or pretty much anything she put in the ground? Uh, she could grow. And I spent a lot of time with her growing up. Um, we lost her in the early 90s. But I've, I got good quality years from my grandmother. And her memory is alive in my mind and in this garden, in this backyard. I put on this shirt and tie to honor my grandmother. Since this part of the video is dedicated to her, I felt it appropriate to wear this for her. I spent tons and tons of time with her. You know, to this day, I can't see a robin or a cardinal and honestly not think of my grandmother. I can't really walk in the backyard and do gardening stuff without seeing my grandmother. So for everyone who can relate to what I'm saying here, to the emotion, to the sentiment, to those beautiful memories that you have as a child. You all know the, the, the heartfelt just love for your person. Since this is the 100th episode, I thought it was appropriate at this point to do a dedication video to my grandmother. I actually wanted to do this at the very beginning, but I didn't feel I had I didn't feel it was appropriate time yet, and I didn't feel that I had the correct, um, I didn't have the skills to really pull off a video that I hope will do her justice and make her proud, which I know, she, I know she's proud. I'm sure if she walked in this backyard, she'd be beaming. So now I'm gonna play a video from 1981. Yes, <laughs> 1981. I believe I was four and I'm not going to have all the dialogue in it and I'm going to cut up the video throughout to focus mainly on her and me interacting in the backyard or me just being a goofy little four year old kid running around scared to death of the camera that my grandfather was holding because it was a huge one, you know, 81, wasn't a cell phone, you know, big old huge cameras and they freaked me out which I'm sure they did a lot of people back then because it was new. So I'm going to let this play. There is one line that she says 
that I've never been able to get out of my head. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. And she was referring to all the vegetables that she was harvesting. Um, that has always stuck with me. It's something that's a very powerful statement uh, to me. And I wanted to share this with everyone. Because if you're watching this video by this point of the video, then you're truly someone who's watching and following this channel for the right reasons. And I want to thank you all by letting you behind the curtain a little bit of just who I am, a little bit into the background of me and why I'm doing this and what motivates me to come out here and spend all this time and effort and uh, pain, as you all saw in the blueberry video, and um, to do this. It's a passion. It's a love. It's from my heart. I might not always show it in my face, but <laughs> the, the, the love for this is there. So sit back, enjoy this part of the video. It is an original video from 81, so there's no special effects in it. All the crazy, all the crazy video stuff that's in it, you know, the, the old looking kind of video is real. It's all real. I'm going to overlay it though with a song that I believe was her favorite song. At least when I think of my grandmother, that's the song that I hear playing. So I uh, hope you all enjoy this. like ah! <laughs> and she hasn't seen them actually I in the see ground it from here yep so oh. here we go okay so as we come in this entire plant is star bright and then this entire plant over here is moonlight are we allowed to touch it yeah mm -hmm. you can touch it are you okay. sure oh, yep yeah, i'm positive oh look at all the babies do you see that one? That is as, okay, I might not want to touch that one because he's still growing. Real close here. For those that don't know what a spoon tomato is, basically they are the size of peas or small marbles and they can fit in a spoon. Get their name. Hence the name spoon tomato because they're oh, really nice. small. And again, you can see how small they are right there compared to, compared to a normal tomato. So you can see how big these are compared to that right there. There we go. Now you can really see how small they are. Wow. That is so awesome. That is awesome. This is the first one. That's the first one of the year here on Down Home Backyard Gardening Single Seed Challenge 2022. 
spoon tomato and Darian. that came off of star bright mm -hmm. and we have some i have another one is it ready okay right. we try another one. nope not that one not that one it's not ready yet okay that's but maybe right. in a day or two that one will be ready and then there's some other ones darian i think you should hold it let's let darian hold it what do you think what what do you think about what about the spoon tomato oh i think it's cute it's cute yeah yeah i love it Tomato is going to the classroom where, if you all remember, remember Moonlight took that vacation and that little trip about three months ago before they got planted, before she got planted into this garden. So, you know, what's amazing, Mr. Chad, is that we, we saw this start from one little seed. Like that's one little seed. That's like, I think I'm, I'm more like this whole experience is amazing because I'm in a yard where you like, we see this video. We get this little seed, it grows in my classroom, but it's here and I'm going to take like the harvest tomorrow. That is so cool. Like this whole experience, boys and girls, is amazing. I love it. Love, love it. Now, I, I do want to give a shout out to Mr. Scott Head at Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Sir, this is exactly why I love this challenge so much because like she just said, mm -hmm. the students can see what one seed, one seed can do and produce and become and it's just an amazing teaching experience and for any other teachers that are watching this video or any of the other single seat challenge videos please get on board start that process of joy of wanting to grow in a child's heart in their mind and it will produce down the road maybe not right away but that seed will always be there pun intended emo at all no are you sure i mean i'm wearing black but like well, I'm wearing black, Black's but hey, cool Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like your face here. Are you recording? <laughs> I am recording. Oh my god. I'm, put <laughs> I'm not putting this in the video. Put it in there. No, then people are going to be like, oh, he's so mean to his daughter. That's yeah. how we are, guys. We just <laughs> it's go a back healthy, and forth. It's a healthy relationship. See, I now guess. they know. Now you can yeah. put it in the video. I, I guess. Hey, everybody. So, I want to do a garden tour. Now, I have not seen the garden since june 5th i took my youngest daughter darian on a vacation this past week we went to key west florida uh, for those of you that have not been to key west i highly encourage you to go at some point and even more so you've got to do the fort jefferson seaplane adventure tour or this, you've got to take the seaplanes out there the captain we had was amazing. The tour was insane. The water was crystal blue, as you can see in these pictures here. Uh, just an amazing, an amazing vacation. But now. So we are standing in the cell of Dr. Samuel Mudd. Wait, oh. Which, if you know your history, is the doctor who set John Wilkes Booth's leg after he killed Lincoln. He was sent here as a prisoner. Kind of eerie, honestly. And then that's the door right there. It's really cool to be here. Like, really cool. Like, turn around with it all behind me. All right, we just came up these crazy stairs. I'm out of breath, man. Seriously, but look at how awesome it is. We're at the top of the fort. What a view! And now let's go look at that view. Oh yeah, we're going up there. This is a guardian of the gulf. If you didn't notice, just let me know. Guardian of the gulf. Hey, one thing that's kind of cool and creepy, there are no handrails here around this entire place. There's no modern safety anything. This is truly historic. And then, bam, look at that view. My word. Really cool. <laughs> look at that in the background. I love it. Let's turn that around. We are at the very 
very top. We don't get no higher point than this right here at Fort Jefferson. A really cool courtyard. They say eight rangers, park rangers, live here 24-7. I guess over here. They get their food delivered once a week. One of those cannons from back in the day. So cool. Look at that cannon right there. My Snapchat's gonna be so lit. It's gonna be lit, yo. There's a no percent chance I'm trying a wasabi radish, like at all. No. So, well, <clears throat> okay, so I've never done this, but let's have some fun with this. I do not like wasabi at all. So what I'm about to offer everyone out there is a chance to get me to actually eat a wasabi radish. So, um, Here's the challenge to you all. If this, did I win the challenge or did you all win the challenge? So let's answer it this way. I won the challenge. I technically, <laughs> I don't have to do this challenge, but in the sense of having fun and let's just all get a laugh at my expense. <laughs> let's go ahead and harvest this wasabi radish. What do you say? Oh man, like I'm not looking forward to this. All right, I'm going to try to keep this in my mouth as long as I can before I have to spit it out. But I know I'm not. All right. All right, here we go. Wasabi radish. No. Ah. <laughs> this stuff is terrible. So welcome to Down Home Backyard Gardening. Now today I'm gonna to break all the rules. All the rules. I'm going completely rogue on this because I know it works. I know this works because I've already done it. If you're in an area that has rodents, raccoons, opossums, rats, mice, whatever, don't do this. Or do this at your own peril. But I would advise not doing this if you have that kind of an issue. So this is what's going in the bottom of that hole. Old watermelon that is no longer good that I chopped up eggshells for the calcium and then all this meat so you got pork chops ground beef sausages so the reason I'm using this meat right here is because my freezer stopped working and I didn't realize it for a couple days so <laughs> the meat's no good so I'm going to utilize it we're going to repurpose this meat I'm going to make it beneficial for me and this garden everyone I would share my vegetables with this meat will now have a new purpose all right everyone so we're gonna put this in the garden on the bottom level. I want the meat as far down as we can go. Watermelon. The watermelon and the meat are in. Now it's just time to cover it up.
Today's an exciting day. Finally, it is finally time <laughs> to harvest the sweet potato. So hey, this is my first harvest. I'm excited. Uh, if y'all been following this channel, you know that I started these slips way back, like in February. And today is the beginning of October. It's time to harvest, sit back, relax, join the ride, and let's grow. What are you talking about? Oh, Now they're not huge, but hey, they don't have to be. Okay, so not too bad for those potatoes. Now, I'm not gonna lie, that's a lot less than I thought there would be. So hopefully this next bed will have a lot more, but I'm not upset with that amount so far. Uh, I just, I think us as gardeners, we expect the world when you plant something and sometimes you have to settle for like, you know, a, a small village. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look at that right there. <laughs> that is what I've been expecting to see. Oh man. So for next year, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, whether I'm only gonna plant these and adjust how I plant them. Cause I did notice that the majority of the big ones were right underneath where the drip holes were on the irrigation system. So if that's the case, I'm going to totally adjust how I grow sweet potatoes next year. But again, not gonna complain about this harvest, especially, I mean, look at that one. That thing is huge. And there's no insect damage on this one. Let me pay attention so I don't cut my finger. Okay, so I took out half the seeds, leaving the other half in here. Um, <laughs> oh man, the things I do for this channel. All right. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. 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 <coughs> oh man, I feel like I'm, I can't even, uh, I can't even talk. <laughs> oh my god that is hot Okay, so the entire side of my head, mouth, head, hurts. Like I have a headache. That that pepper brought on a headache. Like really bad. Like my I can feel my pulse right here. I've I've drank this much of the milk and mm. 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 Nose is running. Holy wow. Okay. Like, I seriously feel like I've been punching the side of the head. That's how bad that habanero hurt. And it was like that. It was instant. I can't wait to watch this back as I edit. <laughs> oh. And and as I'm talking, it, it it's hurting again back in here. Oh.
These are both Carolina Reapers, but this one is but this one is smaller. Oh man. Oh, all right, here we go. Okay, I'm not doing a big piece of this. I already have a really bad headache coming on. I feel it, but I'm going to finish this video for you. Um, but I'm taking a small piece, a small bite of this. This is as good as I can do. I'm sorry. Um, I'm still trying it though. So I'm, I, I'm doing what I said. I, I'm doing what the, the, the thumbnail said. <laughs> oh, good Lord. All right. Carolina Reaper. The very top of the Schofield chart. Yo, that one is really bad. Holy crap, my jaw hurts. Like, Okay, everyone, it has been 43 minutes or something since I ate that, since I ate that Carolina Reaper. It sent me into a migraine. My head is killing me. My eyes hurt. My eye right here hurts. My lips are burning. It doesn't even touch my lips. My tongue is on fire and the entire back of my throat is just inflamed. That is insanely hot, like, I've never ever felt anything like this. It is killing me. Like I said, it sent me into a migraine. It, it hurt that bad. I think I've drank, I don't know, a quarter of a gallon of milk and it's barely doing anything. Okay, so what did I learn from this? I'm never doing this again. That's what I'm, I learned from it. <laughs> this was a one-time deal. Like, I don't know why the side of my eye hurts. Like, the skin around my eye is burning. And I didn't touch my eye with pepper or anything. This is crazy. Now, we just had an Arctic blast blow through. It was all over the news. It was all over the radio. So I should have been prepared. But, yeah, I messed up pretty bad. So, uh, <laughs> let's check it out. Yeah, pretty much everything died. Um, this is honestly the first time that I've walked out here since about three days ago when the freeze was really happening because I wanted to do a video where I'm seeing everything with you all for the first time. And I'm a little devastated. <laughs> This was a lot of work, everyone. It's a lot of work to maintain a garden. It's a lot of work to plant, sweat, put your, put your heart and soul into a garden to see this kind of reaction or this kind of, uh, to see this kind of outcome. And I have myself to blame, let's be real. I, I did not think this all through. Um, my mind honestly was completely somewhere else. And I just did not put in the work out here that I should have. And um, it is what it is. Can't do nothing about it now. But um, so what, what is going to happen, though, is I'm going to have a clean slate for spring. 
All right, so if you're still watching this video at this point, you just saw the entire 2022, or at least the highlights of 2022. I wanna thank you for your support. I wanna thank you for subscribing to the channel and always being just a motivation for me to come out and do these videos, especially when times are challenging. Uh, I love the community that we're growing here on this channel. And honestly, the gardening community on YouTube is phenomenal. Um, I'm really excited about 2023 because I've put a, a, an extra challenge on myself with it being the year of the seed and everything. And I think it's gonna be fine. I'm excited for this. We're gonna rock and roll it together. We are on the same journey here on this channel and I cannot thank y'all enough. So having said all that, I wanna wish everyone a happy and safe New Year's. Come back ready in 2023, ready to rock and roll. So until next time, everyone, take care, God bless, and I will see you in 2023.